morning Macedonia Church family it is good to see you out there this morning and for all of you who are out there who will watch this video at a later time I want to just welcome you to today's message today's service and just pray that the Lord touches your heart uh, I am Pastor David Sanders of Macedonia Baptist Church and we are continuing with the exile series as you can see we're out here on this uh, beachy area of the Lynch's River, a river that runs through our community here in Jefferson. And uh, just want to continue this exile series. You know, we, we're under this, um, under, under this order to, that we're to stay in place, that we're to shelter in place. Um, you know, we're, we're in quarantine, so to speak. And we find ourselves much like the exiles as we've been looking at for the past several weeks. And can you believe this is five weeks, five weeks. But you know, five weeks is nothing to the 70 years that the exiles were, were out there with Ezekiel and those who were with Jeremiah and those who were with Daniel in the actual city of Babylon. But it's been five weeks, five weeks of quarantine, five weeks of, of being separated from one another, five weeks, and here we are. And I wanna ask you a question because we're looking at coming home again. Are you ready to go home? And what do I mean, my friends, when I say this? Are you ready for us to be back together as the body of Christ? And I, and I know the answer to that. I know everybody sitting right now in their living rooms or maybe sitting outside or walking with their cell phone, listening to the message, and they're saying, yes, we're ready to be brought back together. So as our discussion went this past Wednesday night, as we look at coming home, what does that mean? Do we just come home and, and return to the same old, same old? Well, my friends, the same old, same old is really what's got us in this place to start with. If we understand that God didn't create on purpose this virus, but he allowed this virus through the cursing of the earth to come onto us, and he's using this virus to get the church's attention because there's something that's just not right in his church. So, why? What is it? What's it going to look like when we return home? Let me ask you, parents, guardians, grandparents who may be raising children, what's it going to look like when all of this is over with in the Christian home? You see, right now in the Christian home, we, we see parents spending time with children. We see parents outside with children. We see everything shut down, all sport, sporting venues and, and, you know, even the even our recreational sport, everything shut down. What's gonna change when everything goes back? Um, you know, we've, we've looked at many, many messages that have come over these last several weeks, not just on the Sunday morning messages, but messages that the Lord has allowed me to, to put out, either written or in video form from the house. And we've heard many, many messages that have revealed a need in the church. And that need is that we repent. Preacher David, what do we need to repent for? What does the church need to repent for? My friends, we need to repent of our pride. What do you mean pride, preacher? What are you talking about? My friends, we're dealing with a pride that has developed because we've forgotten something. We have forgotten that God knew each and every one of us before we ever knew ourselves. God knew each and every one of us before we knew one another. And God knew each and every one of us that we would be together and God knew the plan, the design, the purpose that He has for us, the church. But we've forgotten that. And we've kind of drifted away and we've gotten caught up in the chaos of the world. You see, the chaos of the world is what's become our idol that has driven us into exile all the stuff, all the activity, all the busyness for busyness sake. Yes, we need to repent. 
it's time for us to get our focus back on what God has designed the church today. So today, as we look at, a, at this message entitled, Come Home Again, we're going to start with looking at a word from the prophet Isaiah. Before we get into that passage, let me share with you that in the reality of the created being and in the reality of creation itself, there is truly no place like the place the Lord has prepared. Yet there are so many who never find their way there. And then there are some who find their way there, but then they don't recognize that it is God who has prepared this place, this design just for them. So they turn away in search of something they hope will be a better choice. And, you know, I mentioned even the creation. You know, in, in Romans chapter number 8, verse number 20 through 22, we find these words, against its will, against creation's will. Um, all creation was subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation itself, looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. For we know that all creation, it's been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up until this present time, Romans 8, 20 through 22. On a little bit of a lighter note, but yet to help us understand from where we need to come, I wanna share with you from a personal experience with my grandchildren. My grandchildren, they love to watch an old classic movie called The Wizard of Oz. And I'm sure many of us have watched The Wizard of Oz. They like to come and get up in, in Dee Dee's recliner with them and we put on The Wizard of Oz. And that's one of the very few mo movies that Miss Angie has allowed me to purchase off of Prime Video that we can watch anytime we want to. You know, in that movie, Dorothy is searching for the way home. That's the end of the movie. Though the movie is set for entertainment and it's filled with much fantasy, at the beginning of the movie, we hear Dorothy's quest for something more. It's made clear in that song that is sung right at the beginning of the movie, somewhere over the rainbow. And you know what? Many times in our lives, we kind of forget and we say, huh, we want something different. And we go the way of singing that song somewhere over the rainbow, but at the end of the movie, it reveals a very important question that we need to answer. At the end of the movie, Dorothy realizes that over the rainbow is, it may have seemed great to start with, but it left her sad and it left Dorothy longing for the, the things that she had had before. Her whimsical trek for something more had robbed her of her joy. The joy that she already had there at home at Kansas. But she didn't really realize it because friends, in reality, there is no place like home. And what do I mean? For us as born again children of God, there is no place like being in the place, the home place, the design, the purpose, the plan, that God has for our life. So Dorothy, so for Dorothy to find her way home, she had to answer this question. The tin man asked her, well, Dorothy, what have you learned? And to which Dorothy answered, well, I, I think that, that it just wasn't enough to, to want to see Uncle Henry and Auntie Em. And it's that, well, if I ever go looking for my heart's desire again, I won't look any further than my own backyard. In other words, home. Because if it's not there, I never really lost it to begin with. In Jeremiah chapter number 29, I'm gonna ask you if you will, I hope you've got your copy of God's word beside you, beside you there. Jeremiah chapter number 29, verse number 10 through 13. Or if you've got your digital device, open up your Bible app. This is what the word of God says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised. And I will bring you home again, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good 
and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope in those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. My friends, truly there is no place like home. If I, I, I'd like to paraphrase the Apostle Paul where he said, whether in the body or in the spirit, there's no place like being at home with the Lord. You see, together we are the body of Christ. And because we are the body of Christ that make up this small portion here at Macedonia Baptist Church, when we are unable to be together, it, it becomes, it, it is so natural that we feel unnatural being separated. Have you ever considered just how much the Lord loves us? You know, we parents, we understand this. Sometimes we have to let our children, we just got to let them go. We've got to let them go kind of figure it out themselves. Well, you know, the Lord loves us in the same way. And he, 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 um, he chose to love us so much that he allows us to live in our choices. He allowed the children of Israel to live in their choices. Let me share with you very quickly uh, just how the Lord revealed his love for Israel through the prophet Hosea. He told Hosea, he said, Hosea, go and marry a prostitute and love her with all your heart. He said, he told Hosea, and give her children, but know that she will forsake your love and, and she'll leave the home that you prepared for. She's going to run after satisfaction in the world. But the time will come when she will be beaten down and she's going to be swallowed up by that love she has for the world. Then Hosea, excuse me, she will become a servant to those in the world. She initially sought for her pleasure and her gain. Then Hosea, when she's broken and when she's destitute and when she's trapped in her sin, then you will go down to the auction block where you will find her and you will buy her freedom and you will bring her home again. You see, my friends, that's how much God loved Israel and that's how much God loves you and I, his church. He calls us his bride. He will allow you, He will allow me, and He will allow His church to step away from all that we have in Him because we just haven't recognized it. And He will allow us to step away until we realize how much we need Him. Consider how much God loved Israel. Instead of listening to, uh, listening to and following the ways of the one that had rescued their ancestors from bondage, Israel chose to follow the ways of the world around them. God, holding to his conditional promise, allowed Israel to go outside their own proverbial backyard and to be consumed by the object of their affections. They desired and chose the way of the world. So God allowed them to be led captive by that which they sought. But you see, my friends, while they were in the deserts of Babylon, out there in the wilderness, much like this wilderness where I'm standing here today, the Lord was preparing His chosen people. He was preparing them to realize their true need for His grace and His mercy. He was preparing them to understand the role that He had chosen them to complete. In their Babylonian captivity, the Lord chose His prophet Ezekiel. Through Ezekiel, the Lord sent message after message to persuade his people of their absolute inability to live up to the potential and the design that he had for them if they chose to walk away from him. As the prophecies were being revealed in the deserts of Babylon, the Lord also was sending message after message to the people there in Jerusalem and Judah through the prophet Jeremiah. There the Lord was revealing, yes, the people will be in exile for 70 years, seven years for every year that they had walked away from him for the 490 years. However, during all this time, God never forgot his promise. They would once again come home to know the good things that God had designed for them. After their time in exile, they would know God's plans. They would know God's designs for their future hope. The Lord said to them, when you have realized your sin and return to me with your prayers, I will listen. The Lord promised that in those days of repentance and restoration that their search for him 
will not be in vain. Not like it was with the Lord when he was searching for someone who would stand in the gap as we find in Ezekiel 22. So today, today let us ponder our own lives with the question, have we gone the way of the exile? Does your walk with the Lord feel as though it becomes, has become like a desert? Uh, today, do you feel like one of those Jews, either with Ezekiel or with Jeremiah? Or are you hiding away in darkness? Do you feel the gloom of an enemy that seems to be suppressing who and what you're normally doing? So this morning, I want to reach out to you. I want to reach out to the church around the world, and I want to say, take heart. For your hope is at hand. You may be parched. You may be hungry. You may be thirsty to hear a word from the Lord, to hear an, or to feel and to know an action from the Lord. You may be afraid for your life. You may be afraid for your children's lives, for your family's lives. But you have the one, Christ Jesus as Savior and Lord, who has given you His Holy Spirit, who says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Who, through the writer of Hebrews, reiterates these words from Jeremiah. I will come to you and do for you all the good things I have promised. You have his promise that, he will never, that you will never be alone. Jesus reveals that his Holy Spirit has been sent to indwell your life. So let's look very quickly at these promises. I will bring you home again. You see, the Lord will restore and he will, he will restore you and he will restore his church. But my friends, he's not going to restore us to the place that we were for that is the reason we're where we are. He will restore us, the church, to the place that he intended the church to be all along. I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and not disaster, plans to give you a future and a hope. My friends, before the foundation of creation, God the Father had already designed your life as we see in Psalms 39, 16. And in His sovereignty, He allows you the choice to receive and to live within that design. You see, my friends, some of you out there listening today, you, you have realized that design in your life early on. But some of you are like, kind of like me. It was 44 years later before I came to understand God's design and purpose and plan in my life. But then sadly, there are some who are listening this morning and you have never received, you have never understood. And my friends, I pray that that will not continue, but we know that some will never know by faith what God has designed for them. What's so amazing about this is that God never recants in his design he never recants in his plan. When the wayward realizes his or her waywardness and he confesses and repents of sin, the Lord fulfills his promise to restore his purpose, his plan, his design in that person's life. For those who deny his plan and his salvation, it doesn't change the fact that he sent his son to make the way. God has never closed the door. In fact, he says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him. Revelation 3.20. God's word says very plainly, the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but he is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. So this morning we have a question. We have a question. Got a question for you, got a question for me, got a question for the church. Got a question for those who may not even know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. My friends, the question is this, have we received or have we realized our sinfulness? Church, what about it? Have we realized our backslidden and our wayward condition? Have we, the church, realized that it is we who have been walking separated from the Lord's Holy Spirit like the Jews in exile? If so, are you, am I, are we the church? Are we down on our knees pleading wholeheartedly for Christ Jesus to forgive us and restore our fellowship? Can we hear his voice calling, come home again, but come home to the place 
in the life that I designed, that I prepared just for you. My friends and my family of Macedonia, will we continue to tarry out here in the wilderness when we can hear and we can know that it is Jesus who is calling with this appeal, come home again because there's no place like the place I have prepared for you. There's no place like being at home with the Lord. My friends, there's no place like being at home with the Lord, whether it is walking here in this life, at home in this body with the Holy Spirit guiding and leading in this present life, or being at home with the Lord when He calls us and gives us our glorified and wonderful existence with Him. Either way, the Lord is saying, come home again. We have an old hymn that, that we like to sing when we think about coming home. And I'm going to attempt to, to lead us to a close with it this morning. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, Come home. Father, I pray that, Lord, you would take this simple message. And, Father, you would bring us to that place that we find ourselves on our knees. Lord, confessing our complacency. Lord, confessing our lackadaisical attitudes. Lord, confessing that we have allowed the chaos of this world to infiltrate our lives and set up idols in places where you are to be enthroned. Father, that we have allowed life and busyness to become the priority instead of you. Father, I pray that we the church, Lord, I don't know about the rest, I'm ready to come home. Lord, and I'm ready to see the church just explode in absolutely new directions like we have never seen before. Why? Because, Lord, we need to follow your design, your purpose, and your plan. Lord, for the one out there today who may not know you as Lord and Savior and may not understand and realize that you do have a design, you created them with a design. Father, that design was to come into Christ Jesus through His salvation. Father, we pray for them. And well, Father, we pray that today they would just simply call out with repentance, with confession, and just crying out, Lord, save me. Save me from the sin that I am in. Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Macedonia family, it is great to see you this morning. For those of you watching, if you have responded to this message, I would like to encourage you to please contact us at www.mbcjefferson.org. There you can go into the extras area, go to the prayer and praise area, or go to the contacts area. You can find my information. You can leave a note, but please let us know because we would love to hear from you. Until next time, Macedonia family, I love you, and we will see you later on. Bye-bye.